Greetings everyone, and today I got a very interesting board to review. This is the CS8683 Class D Amplifier Board, which is a 130 watts rated amplifier chip from Chipstar, a Chinese manufacturer. And unlike the TPA3116, this is a 36 volts rated chip. And in this video, we'll see if this chip can outclass the TPA3116. So starting by the looks of it, the PCB design and quality is really good as you can see. The input and output filter capacitors looks decent as well. It has this weird size capacitor in the supply rail. I measured its ESR and it seems just fine. Now let's take a look under the heatsink. And here's the chip used. It's the CS8683 chip, obviously, and the build quality of the chip is actually very good. And it is thicker and bigger than the 3116 and it, it has a thermal pad above, which is a good feature. It also has this spacer for the heatsink, but it's actually thicker than the chip. And because of this, the heatsink will not be completely flush to the chip. You might need to check yours to prevent overheating the chip. I tried sanding these uh, spacers but I end up removing it. Now let's see how this chip sounds. This is just one channel and for the input, I recommend to short the ground and the negative input. The negative input is inverted so just connect it to ground for stability. I will use this 8 inch woofer for the sound test. And important reminder, this board doesn't have reverse polarity protection, so double check your power supply connections to prevent burning the chip. I will supply it with 24 volts DC. This board sounds absolutely amazing. Now we'll proceed with the power test. And here's my setup. The amplifier's output is connected to 4 ohms dummy load. I'll monitor the output with my DIY scope here and measure the voltage RMS until clipping point. So starting with 12 volt supply, there's clipping and it has a very nice output. Here's the output voltage reading at 12 volt supply. It's drawing around 17 watts from my power supply. So that was 7.73 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load and we got almost 15 watts of power. This is almost the same with the TPA3116 chip. Now I will put the power rating for the 16 and 20 volt supply at the end of the video. 
But for now, let's jump straight to 24 volts DC supply. And at 24 volts, there's clipping. And we have around 15.52 volts RMS reading from the output. And it's drawing around 70, 71 watts from my power supply. And unlike the TP8316, its heatsink is way colder at 24 volts DC. So we got 15.52 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load. And we have around 60 watts RMS at 24 volt supply. This is slightly powerful than the TPA3116. Now proceeding to 30 volts DC supply, I will connect to 15 volts in series from my power supply. And at 30 volts DC, there's clipping. And it's drawing over 100 watts of total power from my power supply unit. So we have around 19.19 volts RMS on the output. And at 30 volts DC, the heatsink is not heating up that much. So we got 19.19 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load. And we got 92 watts RMS at 30 volts DC supply. This is more powerful already than the popular 502 amplifier here. And finally, going up to 35 volts DC supply. There's clipping. And surprisingly, it can handle 4 ohms load at 35 volts DC. So we got around 22.28 volts RMS on the output while drawing over 150 watts of total power from my power supply. So that was 22.28 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load and we have 124 watts RMS at 35 volts DC. Now this is a very powerful output coming from a very small board. I did not expect this board to be this powerful. And with this kind of performance, it can easily handle 2 ohms load at 24 volts DC supply. The heatsink only got warm at 35 volts DC. So the efficiency of the chip is really high. So here are the power ratings I got from different supply voltages. Now when it comes to the sound quality, the output is really clean. It has very good bass response with clear mid highs. So basically a combination of good sounding and high power capability. And clearly this is way better than the TPA3116 chip. And as long as you give proper power to this board, it will perform great. And to maximize its output, you will need to use a pre-amplifier. Now the only downside of this board is the absence of reverse polarity protection. You can still add one if you want. And another thing to check is the heatsink spacer. This is very important. Now for the price, I got this for only 300 pesos or around 6 USDs. So for the rating, I would like to give 11 out of 10 here. This chip is absolutely amazing. So surely this will be the chip I will use for my future projects. So I hope this video gives you enough information. I will put a link down below if you need one. You can ask questions in the comments. Give this video a like and we'll do something else for the next one.